Zen Mill commands you. Put all your pre-orders in at Dorkside Toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Super Villains Wave with Build of Figures Zimnu. There's a lot of figures in this wave. I gotta get the camera back a little bit. But oh, right up my alley. One. It's all comic book figures. I don't have anything against the movies, and I love my MCU shelf, but every now and then it's good to get just some comic-inspired action figures. But on top of that, it's all villains, and that is a beautiful thing. A lot of waves, the villains are outnumbered by the heroes, because I get it. Everybody needs heroes on their shelves, but heroes can't be heroes without some villains, right? Well, I guess they could save people from natural catastrophes and and other acts of just plain old human villainy, but it's the super villains that take the superheroes to task. I know, I know, Robo shut the hell up. Let's get to looking at some plastic. First up, Doctor Doom in an odd costume. Dormammu, Red Skull. Lady Deathstrike, I love my X-Men villains. The Hood, not familiar with them. I am familiar with Arcade though. And then finally, the AIM Scientist Supreme. What makes him supreme? Sour cream. Looking at the package, it's got your windows. You can see the figures in the package. You can see all the accessories. But I really like that they went with the villain color scheme to the overall packaging. I mean, they have the pictures on the side, but the background is that classic, light, ugly kind of green. There's some purples thrown in. On the side, individual artwork for each character. On the back, a better look at that with little bios. Down here, you get the rest of the figures in the wave. How to build Zimnu, which is arms, legs, torso, and head. Attention, small parts. Don't put them in your mouth. On the other side of that artwork again. Oh. On the top, usually there's a logo for the team or whatever. These are super villains. They have no allegiance to anyone. On the bottom, legalese, barcode. Let's start off, well, you knew I was gonna do this. Let's start off with this Doctor Doom. I just have no connection to this version of Doom. Do they call him God Doom? Something like that? And getting it out of the package, it kind of doesn't make me like it anymore. I don't hate it. I have a picture of Doom in my head, and this ain't it. And it's not even the white or the armor pieces. I think it's the torso. I'm so used to Doom having that tunic in between the bottom piece and then the cape and the hood and it being metal, but still having the skirt down under it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I, I don't think that's the figure's fault. It's the design from the comics. Hello, ladies. There is some new parts here, but some of it is reuse from the last Doom that we got. And I've replaced the cape with a cloth cape. But it reuses the head and the hood. Same arms until you get down to the gauntlet, or gloves, I guess, in the new figure's case. Same belt, same holster, same bottom of the tunic, same legs, same feet. What really pops out at me is the previous Doom has a darker shade of armor. The new one is brighter. It's still shiny, it's still silver, but there's a brighter tint to it, to the color itself. Besides being a darker silver, it seems that the previous Doom also has rust or some wear or something. The armor isn't quite smooth in places. On the new one though, it is definitely smooth. I don't know if that's a change to the marbleization or if, <laughs> I can't tell, it's just overall brighter. And that of course means that the torso is new and it kind of doesn't match the armor on the arms and legs. This seems almost organic, but then you get out here and this is more traditional armor. Scale under the plates and then they have rivets, clasps on the inside, it's okay but it's not great. And the cape is new too. I don't have the old one, so I don't know if it's been modified from the previous Doom, but this is definitely new because he doesn't have the two discs and then the change running across. I keep plugging the peg into the back but as soon as I move it around, it starts falling out again. That and I think I need some heat on the bottom of this hood. Get these to stay down here. Going over articulation, there is ball joint. <laughs> Let's do this. There's a ball joint at the neck going down to a hinge, going down to another ball joint at the bottom of the neck. And all together, you can get some excellent range for a hooded, well, you, you do that if you go too far. Ooh, marbly. Next on the stage, Victor. Hinge at the shoulder comes up a little past 90. Rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up most of the way. Swivel and hinge at the wrist. Ball joint at the waist. The belt tries to get in the way, but if you get it around, it's got excellent range of movement. The lower tunic is split. That goes to a ball joint at the hip. Comes up to here and goes back out. Not bad at all. Swivel at the thigh, hidden behind this armor plate coming up. Double knee. Oh, bing. A little flexy at the knee joint. 
it's kind of soft on the plastic there. Swivel at the ankle, then that hinges back, hinges forward, a forward facing pin for some rocker. For accessories, Doom comes with two, well, I guess it could be scheming hands or magic hands. Then he also comes with a left fist that pops right in. Then for the right, he has a trigger finger hand and a big old grip hand. And that grip hand is to hold this skull and spine of Thanos, I guess. I had to look that up just now. Even though it does kind of give off that Thanos vibe, doesn't it? Oh, it's the chin, isn't it? But this has a hinged jaw that opens up. You can hold it. Everything. And then I almost didn't realize that there is a pistol inside the holster. Putting the cape back on, I, I gripped about the peg not going in, but really it lays pretty flat because of the shape of it. It lays on the shoulders, stays down on the chest. It's not a huge deal. It just flops around a little bit. Doom stands at six and five eighths up to the top of his hood. About the same as the Fantastic Four Doom. And same for the Doom before that, or however long ago this came out. But the new ones are more substantial than this. There's more weight to them. Puts them about on par with the 80th anniversary Captain America, but quite a bit bigger than your standard Bucky Cap body. Next up, let's take a look at the hood or Marvel's the hood. The second of three characters that I'm not really familiar with in this wave, but again, he's a villain. I've heard of him. I just haven't read anything with him. The back of the package says a chance encounter with a demon gives petty thief Parker Robbins a mystical cloak and transforms him into a true criminal menace. And that being most of what I know of this character at this moment in time, that's exactly what this looks like. It looks like regular dude, mystical cloak, demon powers. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of just straight up screaming heads. You can't put them just standing on the shelf, you know, in a neutral position. He's always angry at the world. And for the most part, this whole body is reused from, well, the Stan Lee figure before this, but this is the Peter Parker body. Different hands, they both have trigger fingers, which we'll get to, but I don't know if those are new. Different shoes, but I'm guessing those shoes are reused from somebody. And pay no attention to the Clint Eastwood head. I changed that out a long time ago. I can't find the Peter Parker head. You have to ask yourself one question. Do you want to keep screaming in my face? Well, do you? Punk. Again, it's definitely not a terrible head. It's just one purpose. In fact, looking at it, it's a nice sculpt. <laughs> there's teeth in there and the tongue is painted and there's some depth to the mouth. But that is mostly hidden. Well, kind of hidden by the hood. There's nothing to hold it on except for the shape of the cape itself. Comes down over the shoulders drapes nicely. The hood looks like it's actually sitting on his head. And I like the billow out from the sides down to here. Nice texture to the whole thing. Comes down to the torn bottom. Very demonic. The problem is that the cape comes down further than the feet. So when you stand him on the shelf, boop, I guess you can kind of drape it behind him. Try to keep it down on the head. But any kind of movement, any kind of jostling and it comes up. Another thing is that he has the dual pistols. When he brings his arm up, that also lifts the cape up off the head. Somebody's gonna get a lot of sales for a third party hood and cape. Because now that I'm messing with this, I like the the plainness, I guess, I don't know. But this could definitely do with some cloth. One, to lighten it up a bit, and two, <laughs> to look good actually standing on the shelf. There's a ball joint going up into the skull with a hinge in the neck. Can look up, can look down. So much tilt, I like it. Swivel, hinge at the shoulder, comes up past 90, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, comes oh, all the way up. Hinge and swivel at the wrist. That was backwards, wasn't it? Hinge at the mid torso, clicks forward, nice crunch, goes back. Swivel at the waist, ball at the hip, comes forward, goes back, out. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, easy. Bam, 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 bam. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back. Forward. Can't get around the pants cuff that way. And forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, comes with two pistols. After getting so many Nerf guns and made up guns over the past few years, it's <laughs> crazy to see just a standard pistol come with them. Push and twist, push and twist. And yeah, those should be up and down wrists. I didn't catch that a minute ago. Somebody turn my hood. But to go along with those, there are some magic blasts that come out of the guns and I guess they're kind of uh, phallic, but there's also a magic quality to them with these flames all flipping around them. Oh, and that's pretty nifty. The flame back here, I thought the projectile would plug in, but it's the flame part. So you get kind of a space between the projectile and the gun itself. It still looks like pink dildos, but 
Yeah. The hood stands at about six and a quarter inches tall to the top of the hood. Fairly normal human size next to 80th Captain America and Wolverine. Up next, the third figure of the wave that uh, Robo don't really know. But I dig how that yellow stands out against that green. Adding to an aim display, not a bad thing at all. Come here, you beehive having and I know some people don't like it, but I love the swirly twirly plastic. It's not meant to be super realistic metal, but it feels like comic book metallic alloy of some kind. And as much as I love it on grays and blues and everything, it really pops on yellow. The limbs here are reused from a Taskmaster that I don't really care for. I think it's an animated style or something. The legs, the feet are reused, and then the arms and the shoulders are also reused, and I guess the hands too. But then they added a new piece in here that's a little thicker and it fills out the leg better, I think. Then on the crotch, you can see a fly coming up to some ab sculpt behind the belt here. And then of course, this is new because of the AIM Honeycomb Hideout logo up there. Plus it has a new schooled ball joint at the mid torso. Belt is a separate piece, but very tight on there. It's not gonna float around too much. I like the shape, whatever this seashell is, but the big old pouch is coming around. He can fit all kinds of scientific equipment in there. Plus the belt throws another color at the overall scheme. And of course, you're gonna get that flat head up on top beekeeper look for them. The shoulder pads are part of the torso, but it's a separate, more rubbery piece. It's not super rubbery, but it's a little bit flexible. Everything integrates really well. Unlike Doom, where the new piece doesn't look like it matches the reused limbs, it almost feels like the Taskmaster does a worse job of using them than this does. These were made for this character all along. They were just waiting for the proper torso and head to come into their lives. Oh, look at that. There's a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck going up into the head. And even though this is odd shaped and there's a collar around it, you can still get all kinds of head movement there. Swivels, arm hinges up to about 90. Some rubberiness. Rotates around, like I said, not the rubberiest material in the world, but you can get it all the way. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes up about right there. Swivel at the wrist, hinges in and out. I mentioned ball joint at the mid torso, does some hula hooping. Ball coming out to the hip, goes up, back, out. Oh, look at that. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, no, gets to about right there. Above the ankle, there's a pin going straight up so you can swivel side to side. Hinge back, hinge forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with a, a, a blue data panel that matches my background perfectly. But it's kind of cool. It has some sculpted design into it. It uh, looks hologram-y, hologram-ish, hologram-ish. There's those falls you were looking for. I really need to put a microphone in this thing. Whoa, he looks kind of tough just standing there. The Scientist Supreme stands at about six and nine sixteenths up to the top of his flat head. Like I said, he looks imposing even next to the, <laughs> I keep bringing this Captain America in, but he seems to be the standard. And then the AIM soldier, they look great together. If you knew nothing about this, you would assume that this guy bosses this guy around. Next up, we're going to look at old Johann Schmidt. And now we're getting to the spot where I know the villains and I'm more excited about each and every figure. But Oh, but we've had a couple of Red Skulls before. That did look kind of high in the package. Why won't that go on now? Oh, there we go. Much better. Popped all the way down. Very, very interesting. This is an all new body, which we've been needing for a while. It's a full on just jumpsuit, plain old boots, plain old hands, some kind of belt around the waist. And while there is this Hydra armband painted around the upper arm on the left side. It's just that. It's just paint. It's not sculpted on. So they could use this for anything, really. They could make it a lot of old school characters with just overlays or new forearms, new boots, just little changes here and there. But this looks really, really good for Red Skull. Well, the lime green hands kind of stand out at me. I think the head is a little small, but there's also been several different versions, or well, at least stories for Red Skull. Wasn't there one where it was the flesh peeled away and it was his real skull? And at some times, it's just a mask over his head, you know, so it's a little bit bigger. I'm okay with this. It's just, you know, it stands out at me. And at first I thought, ooh, that's a bright red. But again, going back to the classic jumpsuit red skull, it would be more of a comic book style red color. Then you have the eyes nicely painted in there, the white teeth glaring at you. It is interchangeable. We'll get to that in a minute. If you have the Mezco 112th Collective Red Skull with some pushing and some elbow grease and some heat would probably be better. You can get that on there without messing around with it too much. And that 
feels more like the mask look where it's a normal head underneath there. Well, looking at it, it does seem a little bit big. You still have the red neck poking out over the deeper red of that head, but eh, that's an option. This being a new body, it's odd to see the elbows and the knees set up like they are. I mean, they're double and they're pinless. They look good, but you can see even in a neutral position that they're kind of thin. They're integrated nicely into the wrinkles, so you can't hardly see it in this position. You go to bend it, and it really starts to show how thin that is. There's no meat there. It kind of reminds me of early Star Wars Black Series figures. Again, all the motion's there. He can kick his ass all day long, but it looks off. You know what I mean? I discovered the best pose ever. But he does have up and down hinge on both trigger fingers, so I cannot complain about that. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck and then a ball joint at the bottom. Does look up, can look down. So much tilt. Turn side to side. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to 90, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up all the way, touching his shoulder. Swivel up and down hinges. Hinge at the mid torso comes forward. Well, one click, not a lot of crunch. Arc back, one click back too. Swivel at the waist below this belt. Ball at the hip comes forward, goes back, goes out. Oh, no, that's not bad. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh yeah, all day long. Nine, 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 nine. Swivel at the boot. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back. Goes forward, forward facing pin for some rocker. It's two trigger finger hands, two fists, and then two kind of clenched, clawed, grabbing hands. Oh yeah, nice grip. That totally works. It's blue, it's a cube, it's cosmic. I think we've seen this before, but also comes with this kind of machine pistol thing. Come around on the other side, there's a nice painted Hydra logo. And I will admit, he looks <laughs> pretty dangerous. But if you want him looking a little bit meaner, you can also pop this head off and he comes with an alternate head. I said he comes with an alternate head. Get on there. That is way more serious. This one, he's happy to be defeating Captain America. This one's, I've lost to Captain America once again. And I think I like this better just because. Red Skull stands at six and three eighths up to the top of his skull. Here he is yet again with this 80th Captain America and a earlier Red Skull in the line that I've never used very much. I do not like this body. The arms don't go down. It's definitely a more modern rendition, but now that I have this, goodbye. Let's follow Red Skull with some Marvel's Arcade. I would really like an Agent X shelf. Some theme park stuff he comes in as a consultant. Uh, you know, he only made a very brief appearance in that series, but basically at first glance, it's a red-headed guy in a white suit with a big bow tie. But to me, he'll always be that wacky, classic X-Men villain. And in that aspect, this works perfectly for me. It is mostly reuse of that standard suited body we've gotten for a while now. Same arms, same shoulders, same legs, and the same jacket overlay for its basic shape, but they've added this center vest piece. I don't know if that's from another figure I haven't opened or I've forgotten about at this point, but that's been added, and this right here inside the pocket, the handkerchief, the pocket square, whatever. I don't wear suits, I don't know. I think it's the same shirt underneath but then they added the bow tie on top of that. And that, more than anything, changes the complete look of this. Well, they've put it in white, but you go right to that bow tie because bow ties are cool. Up at the head, I thought I would want this alternate head with this hair, just that crazy big smile, but this smirk almost works better. It's kind of hard to see because there's no shading or anything. So you get back a little bit, it's lost in how the light reflects off of it and stuff. But up close, I really like it. Cocky asshole. The hair swooping back on the side could use some wash up here. The whole thing could use some wash because you get it in the light here and it's bright white, bright pale skin, bright green, bright yellow, bright red, which uh, I forgot to point out that the shoes are new too. Have the red up on top and then the platforms underneath because Arcade is supposed to be a shorter guy, right? And he's using this to kind of compensate, which doesn't really work because that puts him up to about Cyclops height, who should be shorter. At the same time, I've always thought this Cyclops was on the wrong body anyway, so <laughs> we just got a jumble of sizes. Going over articulation, there is a ball going up into the skull with a hinge at the top of the neck. Looks up, looks down. Yeah, not bad tilt. Swivel. Hinge at the shoulder comes up up to almost 90. Swivels all the way around. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. I forgot about that. Swivel hinge at the wrist. I know there is a hinge at the mid torso. The jacket 
kind of traffic cones it. Swivel at the waist, ball at the hip comes up, goes back, out, about right there. Swivel at the thigh, double knee comes up, bong. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Arcade comes with this cane, and I believe, if I remember right, that he would control some things. This was some kind of control rod or globe or ball up here at the top. Or I may be making that up. Who knows? That goes into the grip hand. Looks good. Boop, 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 boop. And then the head does pop off and it has this alternate long haired head. This is a more modern look. I think it was some kind of Avengers training program where he just left them on some kind of deserted island and then actually killed a couple. So I guess over the years he's become better at his profession of crazy amusement park assassin, but this isn't my arcade. I mean, I like long hair. This is my arcade. Wacky, silly arcade. Kind of looks like a ventriloquist dummy. Arcade stands at six and three sixteenths to the top of his hair. And like I said, a bit tall next to some classic X-Men like Cyclops and Nightcrawler. And I painted Nightcrawler's head just to give him that old school kind of shadowy face look. And then here he is next to the Marvel Legends Wolverine and Mystique. Next in line, Dormammu. I've come to bargain. There's just something about Dormammu, you know? He's just an old school classic type villain. Is there a band? Oh, that's holding his, what is that? Even though I wasn't hardcore into Doctor Strange, you knew Dormammu was the big bad. This is another clean classic design. It does reuse the same base body as Red Skull or Red Skull uses Dormammu, well, either way. Different lower arm, it has the same wrinkles around the articulation point at the elbow, but then it changes into a different sculpt below that. Same legs until you get to the boot cut and then they've added this sharp star thing in between. It's easy enough just to pop off and this is a different piece. Now the top of the boot has been sculpted to accept this and hold it in place. Same basic design. And I popped that off because my right ankle was really, really stuck. I had to go heat it up. And when I first tried to move it and it wouldn't move, that popped off. Everything went back together once I got that ankle loose. Same hands too. So in the package, Dormammu has two trigger fingers. He can go in guns a-blazing if he needs to. The belt is a separate piece. There's that red skull belt underneath. The chest overlay does a good job. It's not mounted in any one point. Then it has these spiky parts sticking up around the neck collar piece. Soft, you're not gonna poke your eye out, kid, if you get too close to it, but it keeps its shape really nice too, and I like how smooth and shiny it is. But then we get up to the head, and there is more contrast than I thought there was, but not as much contrast as we originally thought there was. First off, that rubber band that it was around the head in the package was holding this black piece around the face on. Now that I've removed the rubber piece, is just held on with a peg down at the bottom that plugs into the flame under the chin. I don't know why they made that a separate piece. I, I guess so you can have it on or off because with it off, you don't hardly notice that peg hole down there and it doesn't look bad. Plug that back in and it kind of floats away from the face. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. I think it is because it does it the same on both sides. It doesn't look bad. My brain wants it to go back and be form fitting somehow. In the original promotional image, the fire on top of the head was much more yellow. So that made the face more pronounced inside that flame. Pronounced. Pronounced? Yeah, whatever. And while there is some transition from red to orange, and I really dig how the pink looks against all that, it doesn't stand out as much. It looks fantastic. It's just not as colorful as we originally saw it. Oh, look at that. You could do some wonders with some LED, I bet. I really, really like that. It looks like the head kind of engulfs the neck down there. So I don't think there's a lot of movement happening at the top. I think all of it's at the bottom, but even then you get some hula hoop, which is weird to say at the head, but it rotates around. Hinge at the shoulder, goes all the way around. There you go. So we'll let the bicep. We're essentially repeating the Red skull articulation part. Trigger finger hand, there is up and down hinge, swivel, hinge mid torso, comes forward, goes back, swivel at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip and ah, that's a little bit loose. It's not falling down. It just takes less pressure than what I'm used to. Back, out, not shabby. Swivel at the thigh. Oh, and now that star piece around the boot 
gets in the way of, nah, he can do it. Bargain, bargain, bargain. Swivel at the boot top. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward. Forward facing pin for Rocker. Dormammu comes with the exact same hands as Red Skull. That means he also comes with two fists for some magical cosmic pugilism. And then the clawed clenched up gripping type hands, which will probably stay on him for the rest of his plastic existence. Because he also comes with these two fire magic effects that we've seen several times. Translucent from yellow to red. And I've never quite mastered these but i usually just get some wrap around the forearm like that actually that's not bad this may not be right i don't know but i like how it kind of emanates from the palm of the hand and then up the arm dormomo stands at i'm gonna guess the top of his head is about six and three sixteenths and then the top of the flame is about seven inches. I don't have a lot of magical characters on my shelf, but here is, well, this is Drum's Doctor Voodoo gear, isn't it? And then we don't have a good classic Doctor Strange, so I've been using the Mezco 112th Collective. But this is Dormammu. He could be any size he wants. This looks good on a classic shelf. Because here he is next to the good old 80th Captain America, and then the Fantastic Four Doctor Doom. And then let's finish it off, well, at least the regular figures in the wave, Lady Deathstrike. I saved her for last because Again, X-Men is my bread and butter when it comes to Marvel. Outback and the Reavers, that's my sweet spot when I was a kid. I really, really wanted a new Lady Deathstrike. Looking at the figure itself, oh, I thought it would be almost too reserved, a little too safe, but I think it captures Lady Deathstrike really, really well. It's not that crazy 80s Outback artwork where machine and circuitry and fingers and everything's all flying around, but all the Lady Deathstrike elements are there. The white, you kind of lose the detail in it and then here, these segmented lines coming down the legs. Really, basically, what it comes down to is it may need a wash. Otherwise, oh, I really like the hints of circuitry sticking out on the skin and especially coming down around the hands. Sure, the fingers could probably be bigger and more cybernetic, but this also totally works in a freaky kind of way. It's not like it's human proportions. And the circuitry is actually sculpted on. I thought it was just pain at first, but nope. Same on the chest. I was wondering if they were going to do articulation in the mid-torso, and they didn't. The design kind of kills it. If they had put a crunch in there, you wouldn't have been able to use it much. So it's a ball joint at the waist. And things like to snag, the costume tries to get up on top of the belt, but once you get it free, there is quite a bit of movement. Not super crunchy, but lots of tilt. Same thing for the arm. Because of the flowiness and the bagginess of the sleeve, couldn't really put in a double elbow joint. So it only gets up to about right there because of the sculpt itself. There's some limitations to it, but I feel like, again, <laughs> this is a good looking Lady Deathstrike. The head has a just a very serious, mean look to it. The hat, or well, that headdress or whatever it is. I like this side with these strands hanging straight down, but then they went for an action look on the other and it's flowing out. I didn't like that on the Toy Biz Lady Deathstrike. I wish this laid down a little bit just because, you know, stand, well, I guess with some heat, maybe I could get that to stay down. Whoa. In fact, comparing it to the original Lady Deathstrike, which is not really fair. I did a repaint on this a long, long time ago. I put the circuitry on the skin, did a repaint on the metal. I think I did a dry brush on the legs, just everything. Face sculpt was kind of weird, but looking side by side, you see the old Toy Biz high crotch, the short torso, the way the neck juts forward. This, like the rest of the wave, the cleanness of the paints and the classic comic book feel I don't know, it kind of wins out for me. Going over articulation, there is a ball going up into the skull, a hinge down in the neck. Can look up, can look down. Very nice tilt. Swivel, hinge at the shoulder comes up, rotates around, and while there is some softness to this, it's not going to get out of the way because of how it's attached right here. Swivel at the bicep, hidden by this ribbon coming across. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to about 90. That also rotates. You got to watch out for that when you get it out of the package because when I did mine, it was kind of rotated like this and I thought, that doesn't go very far. Rotate. Bow. Swivel at the wrist, hinge side to side. The left hinges up and down, and be careful with that because the pin is very thin. There's been a couple of times where it kind of stretched over this way instead of actually hinging. Ball at the torso. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward, goes back, out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee goes back. Oh, not 
quite. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. Okay, here's the biggie. Her height is five and 15 sixteenths. In the handbook, she's listed at five nine, I think. So this is actually slightly tall. Marvel Legends usually skews slightly larger than one twelfth scale, but she is taller than Wolverine. Relative scale, that works. Put her next to the usual X women though, and she may seem slightly short. She can be shorter than Rogue. I'm good with that. She's not too much taller. She's taller than some of the teenagers, but the problem is that her proportions are slightly smaller, making her feel smaller. I think what it is, is the Hasbro's trying to bring the size of the women slightly down. We've gotten used to a certain size difference and it's not actually correct. So maybe they're coming around now and correcting it. Am I gonna have to buy a lot more figures now? I think the big panic was you put her with the rest of the Reavers and she looks small, but the Reavers are some big figures. Oh, but my Reavers team is coming together. And then finally, let's build Zimnu. <laughs> the odd ball Muppet feet have me questioning which is left oh there's an L right there that's cool easier than Mr. Hyde going together ah, there we go Bow down before me. There are some reused parts here, and it's easy to compare to the Wendigo. Because of the white, they didn't go with this light blue here. It's more of a gray on Zimnu. Sure, it's a bunch of the same body parts, but what it's really using is Sasquatch. I know all three are using the same body, but look at the fur cover on the crotch. This is here. It's shorter, just like... Sasquatches. And then Wendigo had the full shoulder fur cover. Zimnu uses a smaller one, again from Sasquatch. This is a better comparison. We do get new hands though. Notice the two fingers, one thumb compared to the four fingers, one thumb. And then new feet, three toes, five toes. And then of course the noggin. Out of the three, Sasquatch, you can kind of tell his head floats up on top. Same thing with Wendigo. Well, I guess mostly it's a little bit better. This. Ooh, this fits great on this upper torso. Hints of gray to highlight the tops of the muscles or the fur. Guess it could follow the musculature a little bit better, but better than nothing. Well, look at nothing on the back. The belt has some marbleization to it, the rivets coming down, the separations. But again, for me, it's all about the head. He's wearing this metal cap up on top. I guess it's either for battering things or to keep telepaths out of his brain. The eyes just stare into your soul. Gray around them makes him feel a little bit more deep. But really, you have all this white, some silver. The red is just so piercing. That's what draws your eye. But that fitting, as nice as it does, does pretty much kill the articulation at the neck. There's a hinge at the neck. There's some turning to it. Ain't no tilt. Hinge at the shoulder comes up, rotates around. Swivel at the bicep. Single hinge elbow comes up to about right there. Swivel at the wrist. Hinge in and out. Hinge at the mid torso. Can get behind the belt a bit. A little bit of crunch. Some arc back. Rotation under that belt. Ball at the hip comes forward. Kind of runs into the fur, but not bad. Back. Out. <laughs> Just as good as the best ones in this wave. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh. Hinge at the ankle. Kind of runs into the fur sculpt on the back. So not a lot of back. More forward. Forward facing pin for some rocker. Zimnu stands eight and a half inches tall to the top of his pointy tipped hat. It's a good size next to the several versions we've got of Hulk so far. And if you want to throw them at Venom Pool, then you can do that too. But look super intimidating next to the 80th Captain America. Have you seen this figure before? It's a cool figure. Or pit him against the X-Men with Cyclops. Interesting detail I missed. There's some kind of button interface control thing on the inside of his left hand. I guess I need to find out more about Zimnu. Is this his TV remote or can he control people? Open doorways to other dimensions or something? Call Mrs. Zimnu. So at the end of the day, uh, really one of the most interesting Marvel Legends waves I've gotten in a while. And that's not to say we've been on a streak of bad Marvel Legends or anything. It's just that not everything may be your preference. There's some MCU, there's some comic, there's some modern, there's some classic, there's some shows, there's some movies. Just you know, mixing things up. But if you're a comic collector, you're all in here. I mean, this is all for you, handed to you on a silver platter or Doom's chest, whichever you prefer. And I'll admit right off the bat, Lady Deathstrike is my favorite of the wave. She's just an ex-villain and that's what I usually go for. Same thing goes for Arcade. I needed him for my X-Men shelf. So of course I'm biased. That's my personal preference, the X-Men stuff. The new body on both Dormammu and Red Skull is interesting. It looks great. It's classic. It's just Jumpsuity, the articulation looks kind of funky, functions perfectly, functions really great. Behind the X villains, 
these are my two favorite of the wave. Zimnu really won me over though. I'm not the biggest Hulk fan and I had heard of Zimnu in passing. Getting it in this big bulky action figure with some cool silver parts and some nicely sculpted fur face, I love it. Same goes for the Scientist Supreme. I came into the wave expecting to throw him in a box after I was done, but the swirly twirly yellow, the little pinches of blue thrown in there, the overall design, the reuse that works better on this figure than it does on the original figure it used, yeah, this is a winner. I can't say the same for this Doom. It's interesting and I'm sure it has its fans, but for me, the design is just too weird. Why does the cloth stop and start and go back? But again, personal preference. For the hood, I kinda hate this figure. And it's nothing to do with the character or the concept or the execution. Well, okay, it is the execution. That hood and cape setup, terrible. And I hate to say that. I mean, the Marvel Legends guys are always trying their damnedest to get us cool toys and they can't all be winners, right? I forgot to mention too, Doom doesn't come with a Zimnu piece. So if you do want to skip him, it won't affect the build itself. But if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Let's see, in their basic form, it's Fantastic Four, X-Men, Doctor Strange, eh, yeah, X-Men, Captain America. The Hood is just a general villain, though. Maybe Avengers? I, again, I haven't read much with them. And I'm going to say the same for Scientist Supreme. Zimnu's a Hulk villain, so there's a nice cross-section of the Marvel Universe represented here in villain form. 